Welcome to Discover Me Podcast, where we bring you amazing people doing remarkable things in a very influential way. I'm Brian. And I'm Lavanna. And today we have an amazing guest with us. She's a life coach, an author, a mother, a wife, and a retired Air Force officer, Dr. Renee Skelton. Welcome, Dr. Renee. How are you? I am great. And thank you for allowing me to be on here. This is so exciting. No, thank you. You are, yes, you are our very first guest and we're so honored um, that you could be with us. So to start out, can you tell us a little bit about Renee Skelton? What what drove you to the airport? Oh my goodness, a little bit about me. Oh, well, I'm mouth of the South. So, (laughs) you know, they always say, what's your elevator speech? I'm like, what floor are you going to? Penthouse or third (laughs) floor? (laughs) No, a little bit about me. Okay, so... And what led me to the Air Force? Okay, so me, gosh, I'm still trying to figure out who that is. That's what's crazy. Um, I, I like to have a good sense of who I am and I'm pretty secure in who I am, but I joined the military at 17 because I, I didn't know what I was gonna do with my life and what better way to join the military, right? It was peacetime, there wasn't a war going on. I wasn't like, hey, I'm gonna go defend my country. It really wasn't about that. But I wanted to be something bigger and better. I just didn't know what that version of me was. I mean, 17 is pretty young. So I decided to join the military and received many blessings through the military and grew as a woman, grew as a leader, went from enlisted to officer. Oh my gosh. I had so many amazing, amazing relationships and friendships and just effective leadership and ineffective leadership. I don't like saying good or bad leadership because <laughs> even the, even the ineffective was effective. Um, but I stayed in the military 22 years and then I got to a point where it wasn't serving me. I felt like I was serving so much that it wasn't serving me. And I became lost in who I was because I was trying to fit a mold And I'm not saying everybody does this, but we do it through life. We wear a mask that everybody says that we should wear. And I, military always told me what success was, what to look like, what to do, what to say. And I'm, and you know, I got to a point where, no, it became too painful. So I decided to to get out. I retired. And that's how I started developing more into who I was. Not saying the military was bad. It definitely defined who I was, but it's just a label. I didn't want to be a label anymore. I wanted to be, I wanted to embody who I truly was. And so that's why I retired. And and like I said, I'm still trying to figure out who I am. I'm on the right path, but I've got a whole lifelong journey to go. I understand. So uh, what about your transition? Uh, How was your transition from the military to your current profession? Honestly, uh, well, I, and I, the, my last job was at the Air Force Academy and I was teaching cadets and I was teaching in the behavioral sciences, leadership and character development, emotional intelligence. And I fell in love with it because that's where I became certified in emotional intelligence, because we have so many emotions that go through our body, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully not all at once, but we have like 4,000 emotions and people don't like to address them, especially in the military. We, we learn how to suppress them, right? Nobody wants to talk about their feelings. We don't have time for that. And I'm like, well, how's that working for you? Because it's obviously not working for you, you know? So the transition was difficult in a way because I've learned so so long and conditioned myself to suppress my emotions that to release them and to feel, to heal and all that stuff. I'm like, ooh, this feels icky. And I, I feel like there's, it's just weakness, you know, too much vulnerability, ooh. But it was so life-changing and trans, transformative that I started doing it with the cadets and I started doing it with the instructors and emotional intelligence coaching. And I fell in love with it. And I saw how their lives were changing, not it through me, not by me, but through me, it was their journey. And I, that's where I, my passion was birthed. And then I got out of the military, re, you know, retired. And then I just, be, you know, I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to see how I'm going to, I'm not even going to dip my toes in the water. I'm going to jump right on in. And that's what I did. And I'm living the dream, living the dream. 
Amazing. That was going to be my next question. Was there like a break between you, you know, you're retiring and going into being a life coach or did you just jump right into it? But it sounds like you were doing it while you were in the military. Yes. Know. Yeah, I was doing it while I was in the military, but I really started doing it when I, obviously when I retired, because I'm like, the chains are gone. I'm free. You just release me. Look out world. Right. <laughs> but the, uh, the crazy thing is, uh, it's, I wanted to dip my toes in the water. I did. But then, you know, that military mindset's like, okay, step one, step two, step three. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Let's see what happens. And I'm not going to lie. It's been a little, the first year was difficult transition, trying to figure out how to build a business, how to, you know, like what clients I'm in a different, I'm in a tiny town. Do they even understand what life coaching is? You know, like all that stuff, but no, it's, it's been about a little over two years and it's been great so far. So the transition from the military was the hard part, but being a life coach hasn't been that hard because you were doing it prior to leaving and that eased it as, as you made that transition. Yeah. So what is a life coach? Tell me all about life coaching. Oh my. Okay. Well, you want to lay down on my couch back here? Just I kidding. Need to, yes, I do. <laughs> I do. So gosh, a life coach. Okay. So it's basically, if you're not, you're not the sage on the stage and it's like, almost like you're not the mentor, you know, you're the guide on the side. You're showing people who they are and their, and their, and their capabilities and their opportunities that they have within them and you're just unleashing it. You're helping them to unleash it, to discover their, their truth, their values, what they're aligned, the direction of life they're going. If they have parenting issues or emotional issues or relationship issues, anything, it's like a lot of my clients are women who are just feel stuck in life. They're just so overwhelmed and um, they just need direction. So that's all I do is I help guide them there, putting the mirror in front of their faces. That's basically what I do. And so this sounds like this can be individualized and also like group settings. So like uh, inspirational speaker as well, like all tied into life coaching. Yes. I mean, um, speaking and stuff is like a subset of it. Um, usually life coaching is just, you know, like I'm, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with individuals, right. I do it virtually or in person, um, especially now with, um, COVID and things like that. A lot of people, I mean, I have people from Pakistan, which is amazing. Yeah. So I love the power of zoom. Right. And then, um, I do group coaching as well, where we collectively, in fact, I'm about to launch something with a community-based group coaching program. And then, um, so when people, when people experience the life coaching program, that's when they're like, Hey, can you come and speak on stage about women's empowerment or the stuff we're saying to our children that we should not be saying that's actually detrimental to them, you know, things like that. So they get that information from my coaching sessions and they're like, Hey, come on stage and speak on this. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's talk about imposter syndrome. Let's talk about limiting beliefs. Let's really get authentic into the conversations. I love calling out the elephants in the room. <laughs> that brings me, because I was, I was wondering, honestly, I had no idea what a life coach was. So, uh, and I was kind of thinking like, is this somewhere like, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm at this point in my life and I need a life coach or do you, do you typically identify people that, that should have your services or do they come to you? Like, how does that work? It's fine line. Um, but to answer your first question, yeah, that's what a life coach does. So like when you need clear clarity, uh, or you just want to, you have limiting beliefs, or you just need, it's not being a therapist. I'll put it that way. Cause a lot of people will think it's like therapy. It's therapy for the soul, yeah. right? But it's not therapy. Therapy is more aligned with like mental health conditions. Like I have all this anxiety or I have all this, uh, um, I'm, I'm a, a codependent person and I need help. I mean, I help with that, but I know my limits and I know when to refer to a therapist. Right. right. Um, but the, what was your second question? The like, so typically how do, how do you get customers? I would oh. right. 
Okay, so that's a very fine line because you don't want to go up to somebody and go, you know what? I think you need a life coach. You know, because they're going to be like, eh, who are you? no, they probably wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a life coach. But honestly, everyone needs a life coach. A life coach needs a life coach because everybody is going in different directions. This world is filled with all this white noise and we're, tr- we're drowning. Right. And then we just need something like a detached observer, which is a life coach to help guide you through it, to like eliminate that white noise and see that, that see what's right in front of you. You know what you want. You may think you don't know what you want, but it's there. It's just, you're just so clouded with the white noise of this world. So, but, um, other than that, yeah. Um, I, I highly recommend everybody gets a life coach. I'm not saying, Hey, come see me. I'm just saying, yeah. If you're breathing and you have a heartbeat, you probably need a life coach. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I need a life coach. Sometimes. Oh, I know. I need a life coach all the time. Um, so I want to go back just a little. You talked about um, parenting, talking to parents about parenting. Um, does that bleed over into our children? Like, do you, are there life coaches for children? Or do you, yes. okay, talk yes. to me about that. Uh, there are life coaches for children. I, a lot of my clientele are not children. They're actually parents, right? Okay. Because they're trying to navigate through um, defiance with their children or the eye rolling or the tantrums or the, why are they, why, why am I hugging? Uh, why, why am I trying to hug my teen when they're, they're like a cactus, a prickly cactus, you know, you know, things like that. Um, little people have big emotions. And it's very hard for them to go to their, uh, you know, going to their parents for things, right? And they need like a a detached observer, someone like a life coach to actually see them, not be so wrapped up in the, in the world like the parents are and to show them that guidance, right? But, but when I, like, I do have teens who are my clients, like teenagers, and heck, I even use my own kids as guinea pigs. But the thing is, they need that. They need that outsider looking in. And it's nothing to say about the parent at all. It's just they need something that's not so much wrapped around in the world. And these kids have it, have it hard right now. They're trying to win society over. They're trying to get the, to be on the For You page on TikTok. You know what I mean? They're like, it's just, they're, it's coming out it's coming from all aspects of life and they're just trying to figure out who they are, which is crazy. Cause that's what we're trying to do as well. Exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Like yes. we are trying to do that as adults. Um, and I, yeah, our kids are in the same boat we are unfortunately. And then I guess just being in COVID being in this time in this environment right now, makes that a little it doesn't make it any better yeah. for them yeah. with COVID with COVID have you seen like an increase in clientele or is it kind of yes. stay steady it's an increase because I think it's always been there but I think parents are being more hypersensitive to it now because the children are acting out or they're either in some of them are not even acting out. They're regressing. They're just retreating into the room. You find them just playing on their, um, um, video games all day long secluded in their room. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just, and the parents are like, just talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Well, it's not working parents because you keep saying that they're not going to talk to you. Mm-hmm. They want you, but there's a different way to go around it. And, and it's just, and I get it. You're trying to protect your children. You just want them to open up and what's going on with you. What's going on with you. And it's just, it's not working. And the suicide rates are high right now. The suicide rates are high. And you know what my clientele are telling me, my children, clients, my teenagers, they, everybody's saying, oh, it's, it's COVID it's COVID it's COVID. Well, COVID's a byproduct. Things don't usually statistically suicide just doesn't happen on a whim. It's just like, boom, you know, things build up. Right. Right. But I mean, not to say it doesn't, but majority of the time it just builds up. They are saying that they feel the stresses in the house and they feel like they're being a burden. They're contributing to it. Do you think it's because of, because I feel like when COVID first hit, I feel like I thought I knew my kids until we were stuck in the house with our kids all day. And I was like, I don't even know my kids. 
right now. I'm learning my kid as we go yes. through COVID. Yes. And even for us as well, I think we can say the same thing. Um, we can uh, attribute, um, we can say that we've been together this last year more than we have um, throughout our um, marriage. Yeah. Um, and we are discovering new things about each other. So, uh, yeah. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes, it can be frustrating. Totally get it. Totally get it. But that's the beauty in it. Because guess what? We have compartmentalized ourselves so much that we've forgotten who is right next to us. Yeah. You know, because we are so busy with that white noise in our white space. Go, go, go. Do, do, do. B, B, B. But yet, guess who our cheerleaders are right next to us the entire time? And it's crazy because we always tend to hurt the ones that are closest to us because they know our triggers. Yes. Yes. So with all of that, like, are there challenges for you as a life coach? Um, what are the challenges that, that you face or you, yeah, you face? All right. You were, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. This is who I am. <laughs> Emotional boundaries. I will take on people's emotions in a heartbeat because that's, I'm a connect, I'm a super connector. I love connecting with people. You know how some, you'll see some therapist or somebody that looks to write, 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 write while you're talking. And I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I need to be there. I need to be present with you. You are my world right now. There's nothing else going on. This is you, you and me. And so I'll record my sessions. I'll try to set that boundary and be like, hey, I'm going to record the session. That way you could listen to it you know, later on, if something shows up for you or you miss something, because I can't, I want to be present with you because scientifically you can't multitask. So I don't care who says they're a great multitasker. You truly cannot, your brain cannot take that. I mean, you can say it all you want, but it's not, it's not working <laughs> and I want to be fully present. So it's setting those emotional boundaries, um, with my people, my clients, because I want to be present with them. Um, another one is, gosh, what's another issue I have with life coaching? It's not issue. Okay. And I, and I love how your brand represents this because it grounds me. I'm wearing my shirt right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, right there. Um, I get so many compliments by it, by the way. I love it. And I have a hat too, but I, obviously for this, I was like, I'm probably not going to wear the hat. But yours Thank looks you. great. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm wearing the hat because I know obvious reasons here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's my worth. I will give away my services for free in a heartbeat because I have I, and this is not an ego saying, I love serving others. Love serving others. And I devalue my worth. I know my worth. I do. But I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And sometimes it's, a, it's great. It's okay to do that. But if I keep doing that for everyone, passion doesn't pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, but the thing is, I'll tier my services, you know, for military members or for, you know what I mean? Like, or even if I just want to professionally develop myself and get more out of it, then I'll give it to them for free. It's just, I've got to, I've got to start setting. I got to hold my voice more often and I get it. It's just, it, it, I'm finding that's a difficult transition. And I'm finding that with a lot of women, especially military members transitioning out of the military, because we, we just do it. We just give away our services for free because we're, we're servant leaders. Right. And, mm -hmm. but guess what? I have to think to myself, there are people who are out there charging $150 for a massage and I'm trying to transform lives here for free. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I've got to, I've got to equate that. Would you say that that's, that that's your biggest challenge, the emotional connection? Yes. Yeah, setting those boundaries. Yeah. Setting those boundaries because oh, this is me. And this, I told you I'm out of the South. During my life <laughs> session, you, it's very rare. You're going to be like, blah, 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 you're going to hear me blah, 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 all about me. No, it's not about me. It's about them. And then I'm like, can't we talk about me, please? I want to somebody talk about me, you know, <laughs> but it's just, and then I go home and I'm just like, I can't really discuss anything with anybody now because it's confidential. So yeah, I guess I'll just talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so how could one become a life coach? Oh, Gosh, um, first of all, it's an art. 
Being a life coach is an art. You're like a personal trainer for the heart and mind. That's how you have to think of yourself. Um, you, you should be a super connector. If you really want to do it, you have to be passionate about self-help and discovery. Like I said, be a guide on the side, not a stage on the stage. So if you love to mentor, 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 life coaching is not it. That's a consultant. You know, that's a life consultant, you can say, but, um, you, it's their journey. So you have to respect their journey, regardless of what you believe, regardless of what you believe. Um, and you have to provide that safe space for them. If you, if you have the ability to provide a safe space and the courage to be authentically you and you love serving others and just to see that transformation that they can go through in like a six week journey or whatever, it is amazing. It is amazing. But um, look into a niche. If you, if you have a certain niche, maybe it's just parenting. Maybe it's just um, leadership. You know, it could be anything. Christian coach. You could be a Christian coach. You know, things like that. Find a niche that you, I like life coach because it encompasses all of that because I truly believe it's not just about leadership. It's also about life. I truly believe that you should not wear two different masks, one at work and one at home. You need to be authentically aligned. And, um, so finding what, what, what you're good at, what's your story. If you can find out your why and what's your story, your niche will follow. Are there like special types of life coaches? Cause you kind of said like, maybe you focus on emotional intelligence or you focus on parenting. So not everyone is like, a you know, like you have like six different kinds of life coach, you know, different, different <laughs> sub subgroups levels, under there. Yes, levels, right? yes. um, are they, they're just people who are just, I'm just an emotional intelligence life coach. Mm -hmm. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's very rare to have an emotional intelligence life coach. If you Google it, there's not many. There's not many at all. Um, life coach, there's lots of them. There's a few, there's more, there's less emotional intelligent life coach and more emotional intelligence coaches. There's parent coaches. There's leadership coaches. Oh my gosh, there's, you can coach anything if you think about it, because guess what? It's their journey, not yours. Think about it, you know? But there's a lot of people out there who throw that word around and they're not using it correctly. You know, they're just like, come to me and I'll give you all the advice that I can give you. Well, that's not a coach. That's a consultant. That's a mentor. I feel like a lot of people are just doing it for the money. I went on IG and saw a ton of people and I was like, how many these people, some right. of them, like they're doing it for the money. I know. Yeah. And then I'm just over here going, um, you're using that wrong. You know, like, uh, yeah, it's, and that's, well, you already heard my story. I'm giving away everything for free. So <laughs> try not to, this is a disclaimer. Don't ask me for a free session. I have a 30 minute free discovery session. <laughs> <laughs> she's like she does a free sign her sign me up <laughs> so I, i'm sorry you know i i, I hone in on you being a, a mother a wife you said you have teenagers you're a life coach you're an author and you just sound like you have a lot going on how do you handle all of this i'm not going to say balance because <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so how do you handle all this? How do you make it all fit in 24 hours? And I'm not even going to say, well, I just do because a lot of us women out <laughs> there's like, I just do got to make it work. Right. Um, thank you for not saying the word balance. That's a huge trigger word for me. Not like I'm going to go postal or anything, but like <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of like huge, but when you say balance, it's so judgmental. It's like, oh my gosh, I must balance everything. Um, I can't do it. Oh my gosh. And if I fail, oh my gosh, I failed. No, I'm going to fail. I welcome yeah. failure because I'm going to fail better next time. Bring it on. Yeah. Right. That's how I'm going to yeah. learn. Yeah. And I always say, if you're going to fall, fall on your back, that way you can look up and get up. Yeah. But here's the thing. <laughs> the, I prioritize one day. It may be this one day. It may be that. And that's okay. But I have to, there's this little thing in the back of my brain and I, and I put it on my mirror in my mirror uh, in the mornings. I, well, it's there always the little, tons with other stuff. I can't even see my face at this point. Um, <laughs> Actually, but, that's too good. <laughs> I know I'm constantly writing, but uh, now, even, oh, through every success, there's a sacrifice. You look at other people and you're like, wow, they're so successful. That's so amazing. That's so great. There's a sacrifice there. And I sacrificed a lot, just like y'all have, like being in the military, sacrificing time with my family, um, you know, losing precious moments that I could have had with my mom 
And then she ended up unexpectedly passing. And now I'm like angry. And I'm like, why am I angry? I'm angry at the military. Well, guess what? It was my decision. It was my decision, you know, taking ownership of that. And so I had to, I had to step back and try not to be perfect and be more present. And when I'm more present and, and slowing down and actually with, with gratitude, because with judgment-free gratitude, I can see the beauty in everything. And in the small little things, the small little things that my children do, or the small connections that I have on social media, or, you know what I mean? It's like being present in that moment instead of just going like, it's like, you know what, let's talk. I mean, I'm not saying let's have a therapy session or, you know, something like that, but I'm like, <laughs> hey, thank you for liking my post. What resonated what resonated? What, what, how did that resonate with you? You know what I mean? Like, tell me a little bit about you. I want to know your story. People are not being valued. People are not being heard and listened to because we're so busy. We're trying to get ahead and we're in this rat race, but guess what y'all? The rat will win the race, but guess what? There's still a rat. <laughs> You're always like, well, the early bird gets the worm. Guess what? There's a lot of worms and a lot of time zones. So have fun with that. <laughs> That's true. So true. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty, uh, that, was, that was a lot. Though. It was a lot, <laughs> a lot of great information. I know I, life coach, sign me up. Um, you've already told us that everyone needs a life coach. And I can think of a million reasons why I know I need a life coach. Um, so with this part of our, um, podcast, we just, you know, want to play a, a game with you called the quick six. And I am not competitive. So I'm already hyperventilating. Okay. <laughs> you gotta, you're going to win. You're going to win. You can't lose. Okay. Good. Okay. Lose. I'm not competitive. Can't we all win? Okay. <laughs> okay. So beach vacation or camping? Beach. Cash or card? Cash. Fly or drive? Fly. Home cooked meal or eat out? Home cooked. But I'm not cooking. You're not cooking. <laughs> 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 this. That's okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Comedy or action movie? Comedy. All right. Yeah. yeah. I can agree with most of those. Yes. Except for flying. I'm not a flying. Oh, no. I need to get there and go so I can just, yeah. <laughs> like, wait, like let's just drive it's, it's 18 hours it's okay oh let's no i no if it's 45 minutes i'm like no i'm not going <laughs> I, I hate flying but um i like to save time um so brian will drive us 18 hours before we fly oh my gosh no we'll remember i told you about <laughs> people connector so i'm going to the airport there's people there hello i'm here everyone <laughs> it's true i'll talk uh Everywhere I go, like she'll go to the restroom and come out and I got like a circle of people and she's like, do you know them? I'm like, I have no idea who they are, but they're nice. I do nice. now. <laughs> What's going on here? She's always asking me, do you know this person? I'm like, no. no idea who this is. I can see you knocking on the, the lady's door going, are you coming out? I got people for you to meet. Come on, come on. <laughs> and I'm just going to stay right in here. <laughs> Every, everywhere we go. I tell people, listen, don't sit by me because you're going to talk or you're going to get up and the next exactly. person to talk. I'm the one that's a bubble. I call myself a bubble popper. As soon as I see somebody sitting by themselves, I'm like, um, can I come sit by you? They're like, uh, okay. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Let's but talk. You know what? You can do that to me anytime. I'm, I'm sure like when you do that to people and they really meet you and really get to know you, they're like, okay, you can't come on, scoot on. Right, right. I know. Yes. I love it. I love it. You have the I, I believe me. Remember, I'm an emotional, I'm all about emotion. So I okay. know when I'm yes. like, get out of my bubble. Girl, you are a 10. I need you at a two. Get out of my bubble. <laughs> so so before we close out, we want to ask you, what's your one's best piece of a uh, life coach advice? Oh my gosh. I have so many, but I know you just said one, so I'll try to keep it to one and a half. Um, so I have a few that I resonate with, but find that voice of yours. It's there, like I said, it's there, but that white noise of this world is muffling it. You have a voice and because there's truth there, there's your truth within your voice and find ways to discover it and always speak your truth. Even if your voice shakes, cause it's going to shake, but if you are aligned with your truth, that voice will come out. And like I always say, love up 
first, love in so you can love out. I love it. I love it. I think that first piece was for me. So I'll take that one um, strictly for LaVanna. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hashtag put on the shirt. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for being our first guest on our podcast. Um, it has been an amazing time that we spent with you. The nuggets that you have provided throughout this um, and just really opening up your life to us. I, I really, well, we really, really appreciate that. At this point, I feel like I'm going to see if it's in the budget. We need a life coach. I need one. <laughs> I need one. <laughs> Maybe yeah. kids need a life coach. I don't know. Yes, we, we need a life coach. Good um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining, joining us. Um, and thank you all for listening the Discover Me podcast. And before, and before we leave, um, we want to collect your, your social media info and put it in the bottom. Uh, when we post this, it'll be there for everyone to see. Um, great, great. And I, if you don't mind me sharing, I want to tell you, I truly am blessed to know you. You are going in an amazing direction and you are literally doing exactly what I'm doing is you're showing people, but they're wearing it. Me, I'm going like you. Like I'm going into the internal where you can't really see it yet, but you're like branding it on them. And this, it gives them the confidence and you're giving them their, you're giving them their voice, their identity. And I love that. I love that because you're able to let, you're basically, the only way I can say it is that you're letting them walk in their truth and mm -hmm. showing the world, like, this is who I am without labels and everything. This is me. Yes. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I love that. So y'all are doing amazing. It, this was meant to be for sure. Oh, thank you so thank much. You, um, you know, and while we're doing it for others, we're just like you said, we're, we're walking through it right now ourselves. We're trying to figure it out. It's not easy, but just do it. We, we're just yes. doing it. Um, and you'll, like you said, you'll, you will fail along the way. Um, but we are dedicated and committed to getting right back up and figuring it out and um, being successful in the end. Yeah, I think and I told destroy you what God has built for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is everything we're doing. I feel like I'm living it right now and I'm sure there's other people living it with me. So why not go ahead and put it out there so everyone can feel, Hey, they're not alone. Yeah. We're yes. all going through this. At least many of us are, I would say everyone, but some people might not admit it. <laughs> So let's just go ahead and make the best of it and move on and become great, great people. So, And that shows that you're passionate about it and it brings you joy. So you know you're aligned with your truth. Yes. Well, thank you so much. We love you and we appreciate all you do to keep us emotionally um, straight in, in life. Um, so um, we look forward to our next time together because um, through this one, I, I already have our, our next session with you um, that I want to yeah, talk We got to get you back. Yes, we will have you back. Well, likewise, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. and Thank you for the opportunity. I can't wait to see where this world takes you. Thank you. Thank you.